This is Alex and I've got a little video here on heat treating steel. This is a skill that is generally useful for those of us who make our own tools, picks, pension tools, whatever you have, whatever you may need. Um, I'm going to be sort of fixing up this old uh, pick so that I can uh, attempt to pick some very heavily warded locks. I'm going to be doing the initial <clears throat> annealing and um, heat, treat, heat treatment hardening on um, my kitchen stove. Um, so it's indoors, you want to be careful, um, have a fire extinguisher on hand, and um, you know, just use appropriate precautions so you don't hurt yourself or others. The first step is annealing the metal, which is heating it to a certain temperature, about a cherry red, and then letting it cool in air. This relaxes the metal, um, creates a particular crystalline grain structure in it um, and gets it ready for the hardening step which comes next. You can see that the metal is just blending in with the burner. So we turn the heat off and let it air cool. The next thing we'll see is that the metal, as you might expect, is magnetic. When it reaches a certain temperature later on, we're going to test for that temperature by in checking that it's non-magnetic. We have the quenching solution I'm going to use. It's a brine made of table salt and warm water. For quenching you can use plain water, um, oil, quenching oil, uh, or brine. Um, I chose brine because it's kind of in the middle as far as how quickly it hardens. Here we have the metal is heated up to non-magnetic so I know that it's hot enough and I'm going to dunk it into um, my quenching solution, which would make some hissing noises. Um, keep the metal moving to evenly cool it. Now we're going to check that the metal is hard, or what they call glass hard, by running a file along it. The file should sort of slip off of it and not, and the teeth shouldn't grab in. If they do, that means we haven't done a good job hardening it. In this case, it looks pretty good. I want to now clean off the oxidation and um, scale from the workpiece so that I can see the um, oxidation products that we will need to look at while we are doing the tempering step of this process. Don't have a proper heat treating oven but my toaster oven uh, will get hot enough to take the metal to out of the brittle stage um, and uh, get the handle to the point where I don't have to worry about it breaking or anything. Um, obviously, again, there's a chance of fire. Make sure you're safe. Um, so we're going to be heating this up to about 260, 280 Fahrenheit, um, Celsius, um, which is about as hot as my toaster oven will get. Um, in its bake mode, um, and this should take it to a light straw or straw color, um, which is hard um, but not brittle. Um, after a few minutes, I'm starting to see, it's hard to see in the picture, but I'm starting to see that color change, um, and um, I want to pop it out and make sure I'm not going to overheat it and make sure that the, the temper has gone as far as I want it to at this point. After looking at it a little more carefully, I decided to put it back into the oven on broil, which is, will give me a little bit more heat, um, and let it go a little bit further um, to sort of get the, the entire thing um, tempered down a little bit more. And here it is at high speed, it took about five minutes to get to this point. Um, I stopped when I started seeing a tiny bit of blue towards the end. Um, which might be an indication that it was overheating. I'm now going to use a torch, which you probably should use outside, to complete the tempering. This is very tricky, um, takes a little practice, and I think I actually screwed it up very slightly, as we'll see later. Um, but we're basically trying to get that rainbow sort of color through there. Note that the oxidation products will not show up while the flame is on the metal, so you have to keep moving it on and off, um, or you will overheat it and burn it. So the final result is I got the tip to sort of a dark brown, 
um, which is hard, um, and uh, the shaft at kind of a spring tension. And I'm pretty happy with what, I've, what I'm seeing so far. Looks durable and um, doesn't seem to be breakable. And finally, um, most of what I know about this subject is from this book by Tubal Cain. Um, get it on Amazon.co.uk. Keep it safe and keep it legal. Thanks.